Hey everyone, in this video we're going to do a little hydroponic test. We're going to test aeration versus no aeration. So as a little background, you've probably heard me or other hydroponic growers talk about the importance of aeration for hydroponics, having oxygen available to the roots so that they can grow and fight off disease. And I believe that to be true, but I want to actually test it and see what is the difference in growth between an aerated system and a non-aerated system. So the way that I've aerated in the past is use an air pump and then have it connected with air lines to some air stones in your reservoir. I have them right, I have them off right now just for the sake of the video. And so that aerates the water, then the pump circulates that water through the system and so the aerated water is available to the plants. So then what I'm doing here I'm going to have one system, this top system, be connected to a reservoir that has normal aeration. And then this lower system I have connected to a reservoir that has no aeration at all. So the only aeration will be just from the water movement going through the tubes and through the rails. So then we can compare what is the difference in growth between the bottom and the top. And I'm going to try to keep all other factors as close to the same as possible. So for lighting, both of them, right now I'm using three tubes, exact same light. I have it exactly the same distance from the top of the rails to the bottom of the light. Um, I'm going to use the same net cup, same growing medium, same seeds. I'm going to do the same nutrient schedule. Try to keep all other factors the same so let's see what happens it's been a few weeks and we've had really good growth in both systems i've been planting four plants each week so now we've just about filled both rail systems and so far i can't tell a big difference between the aerated system on the top and the non-aerated system on the bottom you can see there's a lot of really nice lettuce this head of romaine is beautiful. So, so far, it's looking pretty good for the non-aerated system. There's a little bit of tip burn, but I also have really low humidity this time of year. So, there's going to, there's always a little bit of that for me. You can see this, the size is pretty similar, the two systems. And then as far as roots... The roots on this system look really good, nice and white. And I thought that the roots would be kind of brown, or they might turn a little bit brown from a lack of oxygen. But I'm not seeing it so far. So that there must be enough oxygen just from the water moving around to keep them oxygenated. Because this rail especially is filled up most of the way. So they're not getting any air they're not getting oxygen directly from the air. So, so far I'm pretty impressed with how well the non-aerated system has done. In a week or so, these will be ready to harvest, maybe even before that. So when I harvest some of these, I'll do a weight comparison of the two levels and we'll see, see how they do. This is the first harvest from the non-aerated system. And you can see the lettuce heads are healthy and full. I weighed each head and compared to the aerated system and the weight difference between the two types was statistically insignificant. Over the next few weeks, I compared harvests and there was no clear difference in lettuce weight, quality, or flavor. I continued several months to see if any differences came through over the long term, but the outputs stayed consistent. Overall, this test has been really surprising to me. I thought that the aerated system would do a lot better than the non-aerated system, but that's why we need a test. Obviously, you can grow some really good lettuce in a non-aerated system. Now, I'm not ready to say, okay, everyone, throw away your aerators because you don't need them. I'd still be interested to try this in a larger rail system, say a four rail system, and see if that has a bigger effect since the water is staying, staying up in the rails for a longer period of time. In this case, it may be getting enough aeration just from the inlet and the pump moving it around, 
But also I'm thinking the plants in the back row especially, their roots are having a lot of air contact. If you've ever grown Kratky, you don't have an aerator in a Kratky system. You're just relying on the top section of the roots getting oxygen from the air, then the bottom section of the roots pulling in the nutrients in the water. Again, I think we'd have to do more testing to say you never need an aerator in a circulating system. But one thing I think we can definitely conclude is that if you're on the fence about doing hydroponics or the aerating is a deal breaker you don't want to have, you, you need it to be in a spot that's quiet and so you don't want to have an aerator going or you can't justify the extra cost, then I'd say go ahead and try a system without an aerator. Obviously, you can still grow lettuce, and if you ran into an issue, you could always add one later. One issue with not aerating that I want to bring up is root rot or pythium. And pythium really likes to grow in an environment that's warm and that has low oxygen. So that's a potential pitfall you could run into if you don't aerate your system, especially if you're in a warmer climate or you're growing outside or something where the your reservoir water is getting warm. In my case, I didn't have any issue with that, but this room stays nice and cool. So there are a lot of other factors. Obviously, I can't test all of them right here, but we can definitely conclude there are cases where aeration is not necessary and won't have a significant effect. So thanks for sticking around for this test. I like to do things that Growers like me find to be helpful when we're making decisions about what to buy and how to set up our systems. So I hope you found this helpful and thanks for watching.